Welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on a Tuesday here in Melbourne. Of course, uh, let's go across to our friends over in WA, of course, uh, and speak with the Perth Stew, I should say, playing in the uh, AVL Super League uh, competition. And of course, uh, this weekend, of course, they are at home to the Melbourne Vipers. And of course, uh, we've got four very special guests joining us right now to tell us a bit about uh, their upcoming game in round three. Thanks all for you for joining us. No, thanks for having us. Thank you. No worries. Well, I'll get uh, all for you to introduce yourselves and what position you'll play on uh, the court. I'm Jose Martinez and I'm a middle blocker. I'm Jackie Camburi. I am a setter. I'm Jordan Fanko and I'm a middle blocker. I'm Sam Shillington and I'm a middle blocker. Last week, uh, you played Queensland um, and came away with both wins on the weekend. How good was it to, uh, to beat the Queenslanders, and especially, and especially for the women's team, obviously, uh, being the defending champs? Yeah, it was really, really good to come out strong in our second game um, after losing the first match. But they put up a good fight, and we probably should have taken all five sets, but it was still a good challenge and good to see them on court again. It's always good to play against Queensland because they have very rich volleyball history, and you know, um, with the Olympics happening there, you know, there's a lot of buzz happening, uh, and they've they they're one of the always the strongest teams around, and we we beat them for the bronze medal match last year, so it's always a challenge. Um, so it was just good to face high level volleyball again and especially a challenge like the pirates which so much volleyball history um so yeah no no matter the result it's always a fun game to to play how good was it to play in front of your home crowd there at warwick stadium um i think especially this year playing in front of the home crowd we've got lots of fans and lots of supporters from like different ages different volleyball levels and it's really great to be able to show everyone like a game from all the hard work and the training that's paid off. Yeah, so it's really good to play in front of the home crowd. I think um, sort of our, our supporters got a glimpse of it last year when the AVL sort of um, reinvigorated itself um, and then sort of coming into this year with a new format. Um, it sort of brings a whole new wave of, of supporters. Um, a great new fan base for us. Um, so, yeah, really, really awesome experience. I have to ask all for you this question, which I want all for you to answer. Obviously, been it's a completely different competition to last season. Obviously, you know, you know, obviously to get the full win, obviously um, you need to win in five sets now instead of three, and obviously the game's over. Um, how have all four of you and the team adapted to this new system, especially with like you know, with all these changes going on? And obviously now you have to play the five full sets instead of uh, obviously trying to win it uh, in three. Yeah, so this was my first game that I played last weekend because I missed the first round and I really, really enjoyed it. But it really makes you realize, especially the win by one instead of win by two, and all the bonus points that are thrown, it makes you realize how important every single point is. Um, we we only lost two of the sets by one point in each. And if we had won those two sets, the whole match would be a much different outcome for overall points. So I think it's really important for us to just switch on and be completely focused every single point of the entire match, which is pretty different to the best of five situation and win by two. Yeah, I think for me, it's very mental because um, in a normal, you know, the traditional volleyball game, if you win 3-0, then, you know, you finish, you go home and everyone's happy. But now, for example, on the last, on last weekend, we won the first three sets. We technically have won the match, but then it's like continue playing and still aim to win. Um, so that's when the other team, you know, got a set out of us because of, you know, we're used to playing three, winning and going, but now having the chance of the other team to come back and get some points, then we need to be focused and wanting to win not only three, but also the fourth and the fifth. So, um, even though it's a shortened format, um, I think it demands more, um, focus and you know we really need to show that desire of winning after you 
technically won already. So yeah, that that's a bit of a challenge, but um, I think we've been adjusting with with that. Um, I think similar to what Jackie said, especially with with all of the new power plays and only being able to win by one, it's really important that we don't get too complacent and we stay focused for the whole match because with the sets and only being able to win by one, like it could be like it could impact on the final standings a lot as well. So it's really important like for the team for us to just stay focused for the whole game and switched on. Yeah, I mean, it, it sort of becomes a bit of a challenge because we don't have timeouts in this new format. Mm -hmm. So as a playing group, you have to find ways um, to, to slow down the game yourself. Um, and, you know, whether that's through a coach's substitution or if you need to wipe down the court or if you just need to have a breather, that's sort of just another level that's been incorporated into this game. And that's something we just have to think about a little bit more carefully, sort of thinking in between points. I'm glad you mentioned about the no timeouts. How how difficult was that on the very first game of the season? Um, and secondly, and especially getting used to the power play. I think, I mean, for for the men's team, the no timeout thing actually works really well in our and in our advantage. Um, we're we're a pretty strong serving team. Again, we have a few players that um, sort of can really get their body behind it and put a fair bit of force through a serve. Um, so it really puts the pressure on the other team more so than us, I feel, or at least that's been reflected in the last two rounds we've played. Um, and then the power play, I mean, ultimately it's the coach's decision. We can't really think too hard about that. Um, but when it when it's power play time, it's just make sure we win at least two out of those three points. Yeah, I think the no timeouts, because they're shortened to 18 points, it kind of feels like, after each set, you get a bit of a timeout and you don't really need them during the set. So it's actually a nice, like, 18 points of focus and then two-minute break. And it's kind of a consistent on and off, switching on and off situation, which I think um, works well for us for the most part. Um, no, no, not really much to add about that. I'm um, just that, again, uh, for me, the power play is more mental than, you know, actual game games um what i'm doing in the game uh because you know no matter what happens if they call power play you need to still play the same that you're playing you don't have to like worry too much or you don't have to do something extra crazy you just need to continue playing how you are and you know if you win two points good if you win one <laughs> point then that's also fine if the other team you know every team has three power plays during the match so i think that's pretty much on an even scale so um just about timing and maybe a little bit of luck as well I'll, always helps how's the preparation head to this Saturday's game against uh the melbourne vipers at home which obviously the men's uh first this time around at 5 45 and obviously the women's at seven um i think um we're just preparing like any other any other game and we're focusing mostly in our own skills and our own preparation um i think it's always harder to play the first match of the season because you don't know who the other team has or what do they look like, or how do they play. But um, now every match of every team is being streamed and there's like a recollection of it online. So um, the coaches have been doing a, a good job in like looking through that, analyzing the tendencies and then, you know, still do our game, but like getting prepared, knowing, knowing what we're going to be facing, so preparing accordingly to that. So um, especially being here at home and the last home game of the season, then we really want to put up a show and, you know, hopefully win. Yeah, continuing on from that, on the women's side, we're definitely preparing as we normally would going into this weekend. Um, yeah, just trying to tidy up a few skills and we're also focusing a bit more on just trying to finish the set and come out in front just because we had a few closer sets on the weekend. So we're really trying to focus on that. And, yeah, it'll be exciting to have our last final game at home as well. Let's talk a bit about uh, all your volleyball journeys. Where did it all start and why did you choose it for all four of you? Okay. So I'm originally from the United States. I started playing when I was about 12 years old and, yeah, I haven't played another sport since I started playing volleyball. Um, played all through high school and club. 
and got a scholarship to um, college in America, where I played for four years there. And at that school is where I met my now husband, who's an Australian. So um, yeah, that's why I'm in Australia, basically. <laughs> and naturally, since volleyball is my, my whole life leading up to being here, as soon as I came here, I quickly found out where I could play volleyball at a high level. And yeah, it's been with the steel for six years now, I think. Woo. Um, for me, I am, I am from Tijuana in Mexico, and I studied in high school in San Diego, so it's across the board every day. And um, sport is very well um, organized in high school sport is very well organized in the United States. The basketball season finished and I got invited to play volleyball. And, and then I made the decision in year 12 that, you know, volleyball was the sport I was going to be pursuing to improve on. And I got a scholarship to play in uni in Mexico City. I got um, I got scouted for the Mexican national team, played in the na national team for a couple of years. And then I came to Australia in 2019 to study. I kind of retired already, but then I got sucked in again. <laughs> and, you know, I, I don't think I'll, I'll ever stop. Yeah, I mean... My pathway probably isn't as exciting as, as Jackie or Jose's, <laughs> um, but sort of similar. I just played towards the back end of high school. Um, just a couple of mates were doing it. My bro older brother had played. Um, and he always raved about it, so I decided to get involved and then, yeah, played, played a year in high school and then um, sort of found my, my local club um, at, a, at a wobble level and just sort of got involved there and started playing through there and then um, just through... Um, Junior, junior state programs, and then eventually onto steel last year. Um, and just sort of continuing through that this year. Yeah, similar to Jordan, um, in high school, I had a few PE teachers that were very passionate about volleyball and they kind of just went around and they were like, oh, who wants to play, who wants to play? And so a few of my friends put their hands up and we just kind of went along with it. Like so we started like playing into school and then it kind of progressed into club and then state teams and now playing steel as well. So I'm assuming your state league competition is finished already, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. So I want to uh, ask for for you. You must give your state league team a bit of a shout out. And how did you go throughout the season? Well, checkers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, checkers. <laughs> no, for our checkers volleyball club, it was good. Uh, I joined checkers last year and then we had a, uh, Two wins, two, two, two wins in a row. So we won last year, we won this year. So good job, checkers. Three shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> um, same as Jose, um, Balcata Cats, Volleyball Club, back to back champions. Sorry, you two. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Go, Balcata Cats. <laughs> Oh, I think if you're just looking for a great group of lads that likes to have a lot of fun <laughs> in its first time, that, that Reds Volleyball Club is, is where you should be. Um, we were less. unfortunate in missing out on finals this uh, this year by, by it came down to one game, really, our last uh, home round. Um, but we're looking to build on, on a great group of um, athletes that we have um, and hopefully get some results on the boards in coming years. That's so, great. Reds. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I started playing at Ross Moyne this year and we we made finals and ended up finishing third. And yeah, had a great season. Go Raptors. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to ask, and considering you all play diff in different state league competitions, now obviously now you're playing together um, in your respective teams uh, there for the steel. Um, how difficult was it to play against each other in your state league competition, knowing that you'd probably be playing with each other um, for the steel team? I mean, I think it's great. Um, you know, when you're in the same team, you're all friends, but when you're on different teams, you know, I hate you. Um, <laughs> so uh, it, it's really not that hard to just, you know, at least for me, to keep competitive. And, you know, whenever you're together, you aim to for greatness together. But when I'm on a different team, I just want to show you that I'm better, um, whether it's true or not. Um, and at least for us this year, for the men's side, um, we have every wobble team 
uh, represented in the steel. So I think that's pretty cool. And then I think the big majority, like two two thirds of the team, uh, is made of players that play in the state league grand final. So I think the rivalry is always there. But then at the end of the day, we know how competitive we can be. And we know that we have the best of the best around the state playing together. So, you know, for now, we're all, you know, aiming for the same thing. But after the season, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see how competitive we get again. Yeah, I think if anything, it's I'm more competitive with my friends and I want to beat them more than others so like yeah the steel is a really close group of girls but when we're at our clubs it's definitely fun to play against them but you're definitely like no I want to beat you more than anyone else <laughs> yeah I mean I feel like with the state league men you know we're all good friends um off the court I mean I see Jose every day of the week I'm in, in the office um so it, it's it's all pretty friendly, um, but like like they said, when when you get on court on the weekend, um, it's all go no friends. Um, you're just out to prove that, that you're the better player, really. In the end, <laughs> yeah, I think it gets pretty competitive because, like everyone said, like you're all playing for your own clubs, and it's like the club pride that you're playing for as well, and like bragging <laughs> rights. So it definitely does get quite competitive. All four you mentioned right at the start, what position you'll play on the court. If you had a dream position, we'd like to convince your coaches to put you where that be and how's that travelling? Um, I think I might have said this last time, but I've got a room full of middle blockers and if I had some heights, I would love to be a <laughs> middle blocker. <laughs> Just going along the net and blocking everyone would be awesome. Um, I think for me, traditionally, every middle blocker wants to be an opposite. So, you know, I always say opposite, but um, I was never a good... I've never had like really good technical skills and um, you know, now that I'm a little bit more confident in my setting skills, I think the setting will be interesting. Like obviously not still, but like, you know, division three setter, uh, tall, tall setter. I think that will be, you know, a, a really cool thing to experience. Um, yeah, I, I think I really, really said it. And I think <laughs> he probably speaks for a lot of middle blockers that, the opposite pathway is something we always want to explore. Um, and I think, um, not that I ever actually took to the court as an opposite, but I have done some training this past year um, in, in that capacity and just sort of getting a little taste of that. Um, it's definitely something I'd love to um, experience a bit more of. Yeah, similar to Jordi and Jose, I would definitely say an opposite but yeah I have not had the opportunity to play I think like I've played opposite in like social competitions but that's that's about it no coaches oh. ever put me there. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to ask this as well um what does the sport of volleyball mean to all four of you and especially being there as at the Perth Steel I mean it really is like the community and the friendships and the really close close group of friends you have playing the sport of volleyball and that like group of six on court and having to to come together on and off the court to like succeed I think that is really special and most of my really close friends have come from the sport so I think that's just a long-lasting um, effect of volleyball for me yeah I think for me I mean volleyball is um this means a lot in my life. Um, you know, volleyball itself, you know, it's a game and you play and everything, but everything surrounding volleyball, you know, where I work, the people that I know, and a lot of opportunities have come through that. So I'm just very grateful on, on that side. And I'm playing on the steel. Um, it's just good to see the how the community has been growing so much because even though I've been here only for two seasons, I've heard, you know, oh, you know, we didn't really have big of an audience before, or, you know, you, you see um, younger kids approaching and being like, oh, you know, can I take a picture? So it's just really nice to, you know, be part of that and hope that by showing that there's something to aspire, then um, younger players and starting players can be like, oh, you know, I want to be better because I saw them play and I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I mean, Volleyball is the biggest thing in my life at the moment. Um, 
I've been involved as a in a coaching refereeing capacity and then now sort of an administrative capacity. Um, so it's across all all that, um sectors. Um, it, it's a, it's a huge part. Um, I feel like volleyball is just one of those team sports. You know, it, it's not like a, a footy or a soccer where you know you have eighteen players or twelve players on a on a field and you can sort of like some players aren't always involved in the play. Like volleyball, as soon as the serve comes over, all six of you are involved in that play. Um, and when you do that, you know, x amount of times a game, over and over again, and you sort of form a really um, tight knit group. It's it's awesome to be about, to be a part of. Yeah, I think volleyball for me, it's definitely like more community based as well as being given the opportunity to like play at a high level. I'd say at the moment, like majority of the friendships and connections that I've made have been through volleyball. And it's just, it's really great to like have such a community surrounding you as well. And it's been great to see with Steel like so many more fans coming along to watch, like not only friends and family, but just like a massive fan base and also being able to see like the Wobble Leagues grow as well and to see so many new faces playing in WA. I have to ask, what have all four of you learnt from each other on and off the court? I think from, from Jackie, you know, I really admire how, you know, she connects the team together. Um, she was missed on the first round, but then, you know, coming from the second round, she just, you know, it was like, I've been playing with you girls for a while now, let's get this job done. And it was, I, I just respect that so much. Um, Jordan, Jordan has been improving so much. Um, he coming from the bench last year, just starting position. I think he's been, um, getting, he's, he's taking that responsibility like a champion. So that's really cool. And um, Sam, Sam's also been improving quite a bit. Um, uh, how, how long have you been playing? Two, two years. Yeah, so similar, similar um, position than than Jordi. She's been given uh, some core time, and I think she's been doing really good. Um, so a lot of perseverance and wanting to be around. Um, so that's all. I think we have a lot of good qualities around. Yeah, so Jose, I just love his like super competitive nature. I have some of that as well, but like. Watching him on court is just like so um, exhilarating because he's just so competitive, like wants to be every single other person on the other side. <laughs> um, Jordy has such a great like sense of humor and lightheartedness to him that I think keeps his team um, upbeat and can always make the group laugh. Um, and then Sam is very much what I like to call a gentle giant. And I love how um, calming and just smiling and focused she is on and off the court it keeps us yeah kind of in that calm presence yeah I mean Jose is, is my my senior player I like to look at him as you know he, he's the he's, a, he's our best middle blocker um and, and he like I just in all assets of the game I um, love to feed off of his wisdom and the way he plays is something I'd like to replicate in my own game um Jack, yeah, just has an amazing ability to, to be a really good leader on court. Um, you know, it's not just about how good the sets come out. It's about how she ties the whole group together. I um, mean, I just think that's really awesome. And then Sam, like, you obviously wouldn't know, but, like, Sam is probably the most busy person I've ever met. And I just, I like that. <laughs> Every time she comes to training or she comes to the game, like, she's focused on that. She doesn't get, or well, she doesn't seem like she gets burnt out. She comes, she plays well, she trains hard. Um, and, you know, I have a day off work and I come to training and I'm exhausted sometimes. And I just think if I could get... <laughs> <laughs> I think what I've learned is what I've learned from Jackie is that she's an amazing setter, but I think from, especially it became evident, like at the game on the weekend, like she just has this connection with like an individual connection with every single player. And it's like, from my perspective, like when she tells me what she's going to set me, I'm like, okay, I'm going to like, I'm going to do this and like, not, yeah, like do it for her as well, because like she just has this like aura on court and you're just like, yes, I'm going to do it. Um, that's what I've learned. Like she's very good at bringing everyone together. Um, Jose, 
like what he brings to the men's team, like everyone said, extremely competitive. And it's just amazing to watch like his skills and like how, like from a middle perspective, how that like brings the team together, but also like really fires everyone up. And then with Geordie, it's been great to like similarly, like see him grow and like progress to a starting spot on court as well. So we'll finish with a couple of lighthearted questions about your teammates. Who's the comedian, the best singer, and into their TikTok slash be real? So you're in. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great singer. Yeah, we, we will say Jordy featured in his high school play of <laughs> Disco Inferno. Disco Inferno. <laughs> in high school, so he's actually professional. Um, from the girls, Elise, his oh, mom, yes. tends to do some opera yeah. singing. She's not professional, but she sounds pretty good. What else? I think. Oh God! I mean, Jose is just his own his own best comedian. Um, <laughs> and I never never fails to make him laugh. Um, and we have we have a couple of other funny funny players. Um, our captain Piggy um, is pretty witty and has a really quick sense of humour. Always comes up with some sort of line that makes the makes the team laugh. Um, talents. Hmm, that's a that's a good question. I have to come back to me. I have to think about some really unique talents that the group has. I think you're in mission. If you could ride a a, a unicycle, or could yeah, you ride a yeah, unicycle? Yeah, yeah. I think that was on his like player profile. So you know, I think that's pretty mm, impressive. Yeah. Like, okay. I've tried it. It's pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying all your games are live streamed. Um, I'm assuming you've had a chance to watch it back at least once. Um, so who had the most embarrassing moments on the court uh, this uh, for the first two games and what was it? Well, one of our girls served the ball and it didn't even make the net. So <laughs> you know, he owns us all around and drinks. That's the least his lot, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I think this last part is set. Oh, I think our setter tried to set and then the ball slipped between his hands and hit his face. So that's always a bit sad, but funny. Embarrassing, not always. Could you, Cup Captain, he had a really, it was a really tight ball and it was really high up in the air. Um, and he just sort of let it drop straight down in front of him. Oh, and no. Just, it just slipped straight down in front. And um, I'm, I'm very, very unlike him, um, and I, I still let him know. <laughs> <laughs> Either of you have a pre-game superstition or ritual? More, more than a superstition, a, a ritual. Um, you know, as, as I get older, I actually have to properly warm up. Um, so <laughs> before, you know, I could just do the team warm up and then be ready. But now, you know, around an hour, a little bit more, then I have to actually go through, you know, proper rolling and stretching and doing some movements. Um, other than that, you know, I sometimes when the game's not going that well, I'll retie my shoelaces. Um, like, oh, is this tight enough? Probably not. So then I tie them up. Um, I also don't like when there's two little chairs because I don't like sitting in the, in the bench chair. I don't like sitting next to other people. So I always leave one or two spaces between myself and the next person. But on, on a normal day-to-day -day thing, I don't mind sitting next to someone, you know? <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, not so much of a ritual. Um, and, sorry, a superstition. It's more just, yeah, like a lot of us, I think, go through the same uh, warm-up process. Um, we do the same sort of exercises. I like to have my water bottle and my towel always on the last chair on the bench at a 45 degree angle from the back. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just, it's just always a thing. I don't know what it okay. is. Every time okay. I have to to put it there. Yeah, that's something. Yeah. I think mine, it's more of a ritual. It's just what I eat like before the game and I have to drink a mocha and have like a banana about like an hour and a half, like two hours beforehand and that's like, that has to be done. Like, I'm sure <laughs> that. it's a non negotiable. <laughs> I mean, I I feel like I'm really random about pregame stuff. Like, eating and everything is all over the place, which is weird. And I actually change my hairstyle a lot, which is weird too, because I didn't used to be like that when I was young. But 
I think like during the game, if this counts, I like to touch like the corner. Corner counts. <laughs> corner of the court with my foot sometimes, like just to get my bearings on the space. I don't know. That's probably the only thing. Like on the back or on the front? Or... Depends Kind of okay. Yeah. Oh, you. thank you so much for giving up some of your time to join us today. Uh, best of luck against the Melbourne Vipers uh, at home at Warwick Stadium on Saturday, and uh, let's hope you can beat the Vipers. And hopefully, we'll see you down here in uh, in Victoria uh, for the finals uh, coming up in mid September. Hopefully, go steal. Thank Thanks you. very much. <laughs> no worries. And of course, if you're in the Perth area, and of course you want to get down and support the Mighty Steel uh, throughout the, of course, sorry, their last game, home games this weekend on Saturday, uh, of course, uh, against the Melbourne Vipers. We'll put all the details up on how you can support the Steel throughout the season. There's more on the Smashboard show right after this. Don't go away here on the 10th year celebration.